Welcome to the Life Engine, my free-to-play evolution simulator. It's been five years since I released this simulator and five years since I started this channel, so I've got a big update for you. I think most of my viewers are not familiar with the Life Engine, so briefly, here's how it works. The world is a grid, organisms live in that grid, and they are made up of collections of square cells. Different colored cells do different things. These light blue cells are food, they don't belong to organisms, but they are eaten by orange cells, mouth cells, which do belong to organisms. Green cells produce food, blue cells allow movement, red cells kill other organisms, purple cells protect against red cells, and then there are gray cells with a slit that are eyes that can see and react to other cell types. Once an organism has eaten enough food, it reproduces and can mutate the cells in its offspring's body. Naturally, organisms that are better at surviving and reproducing outcompete others. I got a little carried away with this update, check this out. You can crank the speed up to way faster than before. I've also added more complex brains that allow for more complex movement. No, they're not neural networks, I will talk about it later. There's a bunch of new evolution controls, and I've added a few different color schemes. You can choose a darker one or some softer ones that are a bit easier on the eyes, and you can also choose the classic color scheme. This is the one from my first video ever, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty nostalgic for it. I can't believe that my channel is now 5 years old and I just turned 111, so before I die, I want to give some backstory to the Life Engine, some evolutionary history. My first video introduced the Life Engine on August 7th of 2020. It was my summer project during COVID lockdowns, and I was finishing college and needed something to pad my resume. It actually did help me get a job more than once. But it's actually much older than that. Here is my original evolution simulator before it was the Life Engine, and here is a video of the first working prototype, timestamped to August 7th of 2015, exactly five years before the first YouTube video. That was not planned. And originally, I came up with the idea for it in high school. I had just learned how to code, and one day I took a trip to an aquarium that was in an old department store in the middle of Texas. And it was pretty good for an aquarium in an old department store in the middle of Texas. They had a giant octopus. But for some reason, I found myself standing in front of a tank of shrimp and watching as they waved their little arms around collecting food. And in that moment, I distinctly remember feeling something in my brain just click. Suddenly, it became overwhelmingly obvious that evolution was true, that these shrimp had evolved to wave their little arms around so they could collect food, so they could survive, so they could reproduce. The shrimp that failed to do so died, and I was only seeing the ones that were left. It just made perfect sense. I could see natural selection acting over eons, sculpting the shrimp and the octopus and me and everything else. I had seen the entire history of the whole world in an old department store in the middle of Texas. In retrospect, I think what I recognized in that moment but couldn't put into words was that evolution is an algorithm. It is an automatic filtering process that runs on its own for billions of years. That may sound a little boring, but it's magical because it means that it can be simulated. You can program it. And later that same day that I went to the aquarium, I imagined a simulation of little blocky creatures eating and surviving and reproducing and evolving. I knew how to program, and I've always loved making games, and thus the Life Engine was born, along with my obsession with evolution. That's why I can't do a single video without ranting about it. And I was only able to come up with the Life Engine because I knew how to code, so I will always recommend learning how to code, which you can do with the sponsor of this video, Scrimba.com. Scrimba is an online learning platform with all kinds of courses on coding, from AI engineering to full stack development. Here I am going through their front end course. They use this great system where they combine the video tutorial and code editor all in one, where you and the teacher are editing the same code throughout the course. They give you little challenges as you go, which is the best way to learn, and the interaction makes it so much better than a YouTube video. There's lots of free courses, but you can also use my link to get 20% off a pro subscription. Using this link directly supports my channel, so you'll see me post it in other places. I'm genuinely very proud to have Scrimba as a sponsor. They're one of the best ways to learn how to code, and you should learn how to code so you can make stuff like the life engine. Okay, into the update. Look at how fast it can go. And this is real time, I'm not speeding it up. For comparison, here is the old version versus the new one. The actual FPS is about two times faster, at least. It's typically above that. 
It can look a little choppy, but it is computing significantly more steps in less time. This works by using up downtime when the simulation is cheap, so it does run into a similar upper limit when there are lots of organisms, but it's still faster. After 5 minutes, they both computed a total of this many simulation steps, that is a 2.4 times speed up. If we limit the number of organisms to 100, it will run very, very fast. This is about 10 times faster, or a thousand percent. It tries to run as fast as possible when you shift it into maximum, maximum overdrive. overdrive. I knew I should have gotten the turbo. Yes, it is still slower than the C++ version. Now this is not just separating the render loop from the simulation loop that was already done. I am using the same trick that I used in the LinkedIn's ant simulation, which I shall call update packing. The simulation is updated in an update loop, which is a JavaScript interval. An interval calls an update function and then waits x number of milliseconds before the next update, waits, updates, waits, updates. If you set the wait to 0 milliseconds, it won't actually wait 0 milliseconds, it'll wait more like 2 to 3 milliseconds, which is an eternity. That is so much downtime. So now, in that same update function, I added a normal while loop to run many simulation steps with no wait in between at all, or synchronously. We pack many simulation steps into each update and use up the downtime. Now you don't want to go too far with this, a straight infinite while loop with no wait at all will block JavaScript's single thread and kill the whole website. You do need some downtime, and I've added several failsafes to keep it from locking everything up. But when the simulation is cheap with only a few organisms, it can take advantage of that and run very, very, very fast when it can afford it. This is a JavaScript specific hack, you don't have this problem in other languages. And this must have been done before, but I figured I'd put it out there in case other people want to use it. All right, now let's take a look at the new updated brains. I have once again taken inspiration from LinkedIn's ants and am now using a similar state machine style brain. The original brain was a simple decision map of input observations to output actions. The eye looks ahead in a specific direction and observes the first non-empty cell in front of it. That observed cell type is the input to the brain, and the output is the organism's movement action, either move away from the observed cell, move towards it, or move randomly. If there are many eye cells, we take the nearest observation. This lets you have very simple but effective movement rules, like if I see food, go towards it. That's a rule I follow in real life. I expanded on this by first adding new movement types, like move right, or move left, or rotate right, or rotate left, or full stop. Immediately this opens up new behaviors, like spinning, that's a good trick. And if you've seen my LinkedIn's ant video, you'll notice that these are very similar to the ant brains, so we can expand it further with multiple brain states. Each brain state is its own decision map. Think of the state as the organism's state of mind, or its current mode, and it has different rules for different modes. Each action decides both how to move and what state to change to next. So theoretically, an organism could have a hunting mode where most actions chase, but it could switch into a fleeing mode where most actions retreat. Here's a concrete example of something you can do with multiple brain states. Organisms can now move diagonally by constantly switching between two states, one that moves left and one that moves forward. Left, forward, left, forward, left, forward. Or you can make it move three forward and two left, so you can move at different angles. Multiple states allow for chaining together movements to form complex patterns of behavior. It could trace out a shape or something. And finally, they can also evolve the ability for each eye to have its own set of behaviors. When independent eye decisions is checked, each eye has its own set of decision maps for each brain state. This allows for, say, an eye on the armored side to be more aggressive, and an eye on the unarmored side to be more defensive. Now this still has the major limitation that only one eye's observation ultimately decides movement, and it still prioritizes the closest observation. It cannot evolve a different prioritization, nor is there a way for multiple eye observations to simultaneously combine to influence the final action. 
you could do that with a neural network, but I decided against using neural networks for a few reasons. Firstly, the state machine system is a natural extension of the old brain system and easily backwards compatible. As proof, here's the famous organism computer functioning the same as before. It is correctly computing the Fibonacci sequence. Secondly, the state machine is very computationally cheap. It takes only one operation to calculate a decision no matter how big the brain is. Neural networks add a new computation with every neural connection, and a fully connected network would have an unacceptable number of connections. I could use the NEAT algorithm to evolve sparsely connected networks, but these would still be more computationally expensive, they can still evolve lots of connections, and they're just much harder to implement. They would have to somehow be compatible with the old brain system, and I'd have to build a UI for editing the neural network. And no matter how good I make the UI, it's very hard to manually tune neural networks. The state machine system is more human readable and more human programmable. Now, if you really want to play with evolved neural networks, you should check out the Bibbits simulator. The Bibbits channel was the direct inspiration to make my own channel, by the way. Glory to the Bibbits. I doubt that neural networks would add much more to the life engine. With every update, there's a big risk that I spend a lot of time building some new system or cell, only for it to not really impact evolution at all. Like, originally I added a new brain cell that would add new brain states, but it just never evolved because adding a new cell is expensive for an organism. Some things are just not evolutionarily competitive, no matter how cool they are. Even this new brain system, which doesn't cost anything to evolve, doesn't seem to make a huge difference. They very often just evolve simple single-state brains, or no brain at all. The original rule of move towards food and away from killer cells gets 90% of the work done. But weird behaviors definitely do emerge sometimes, and I bet this will be most useful to humans that want to hard code complex behaviors, like building super compact computers. So have fun with it. And finally, I have also added some new evolution controls. You can make it so killer cells don't harm members of the same species. This hopefully allows for more altruistic or colony-like behavior. And there are now symmetrical mutations, where when a new cell is added, it has a chance of also being added in mirrored positions on other sides of the organism. A cell that's useful on one side is probably also useful on the other side. This may be one of the bigger changes. It allows symmetrical organisms, like purple flowers, to naturally evolve much more commonly. I didn't end up adding any new community creations, there weren't that many this year, but there has been some buzz on the LinkedIn's Ant project, so I'll show off some of the fun ones that the community created. And with that, I am probably done working on the Life Engine for a long time. Not necessarily forever, I'll fix bugs if I need to, but for now it's going on the shelf. I really just don't think there's much more to do here, I've fleshed out most of my ideas and I'm satisfied with its current state. Other projects demand attention, Minecraft especially. I have obviously taken a little break from working on that, I felt a little burnt out, and my Minecraft videos actually have been some of my worst performing this year, which was unexpected. And that matters, I do have to pay my bills. But I know a lot of you are dying to see more Minecraft, so I intend to come back to it with a bang. I'll be working on absorbing some open source developments, I see you Minecraft Community Edition, and I've been working on building out servers for multiplayer use. You can join my Patreon if you want access to the SMP. There aren't any bots on it yet, though. Oh, and here is some of my favorite human art posted in my Discord from the past year. I especially like this person's stuff. Please keep posting your art, I will keep showing it off on YouTube until the day I die. Anyway, Minecraft will be my priority for the moment, although I am in a constant battle for my own attention. I'm endlessly distracted by new shiny projects. I want to make a video about the NEAT algorithm, and a video about AI agents, and a video about the three-body problem, because I just read that book, and I want to make a proper video game. Man, I've been working on something so cool that I've been cooking up for almost a year now, and it still needs more time in the oven. All this to say, I can make myself a little too busy, I can only do one thing at a time, and sometimes I just want to play Battlefront all weekend. So bear with me if you're waiting for me to review your code, or respond to a message, or give you a goodnight kiss. I'll try to get around to it. But I hope you enjoy playing with the new update, I had fun making it, and here's to five more years of weird programs. Bye. <laughs>